For more than a decade, surfers have embarked on a death or glory mission, making the pilgrimage to Nazaré in Portugal to take on the biggest waves in the world. This week, father of three, Matt Formston, hopes to become the latest Australian to conquer the monster swell. But there is a catch. He's legally blind. Formston has spent his life proving people wrong. I've been doing things that people say aren't possible my whole life. As a kid growing up, I was blind and played rugby league, rugby union, ice hockey. Everyone said that was impossible and I did all those things and most of them to a representative level. And today at Fingal Head on the New South Wales far north coast, he's matching it with the best. Matt Rips, he rode one wave in particular. Did three nice manoeuvres on it and I was like, he's more competent surfer than anyone else out here. After losing 95% of his sight at the age of five, Matt relies on other senses to read the waves. In essence, I surf by feel. So I'm using the feeling of going up and down when I'm sitting on my board and then when I'm surfing the wave, my front foot, so my left foot is my front foot, becomes my cane. This week, the three-time world blind surfing champ and Paralympic cyclist is hoping to conquer the biggest waves ever ridden by a blind surfer at Nazaré, Portugal, where even the most skilled riders have been swept up and spat out. Notorious for its 80-foot monsters, Matt will potentially surf 50-foot waves he can't see. I basically hold onto the rope, don't let go, but once I hear the referee whistle, I pull the rope and go and trust that they've, they've got me into the right way. If I hear an air horn, that means you're about to cop a, a big one on the head. Brace for it. His journey tracked in the upcoming documentary, The Blind Sea, out next year. Chasing big waves is something I just do because I'm curious is probably the most best way to describe that. I'm extremely curious about what's possible. A lot of people find his story like really motivating, and I know he's using that term, but it's also a lot of practical stuff as well, and it gives people a lot of confidence and a lot of hope. To understand how tough it is, world surfing champ Joel Parkinson had a paddle wearing blackout goggles. Riding the wave is really hard. I felt like I felt like I was going to run into a wall. Matt spent months researching and training, including teaching himself to hold his breath for five minutes. I'll be wearing flotation and I've got CO2 canisters. That you pull, that you pull if you go yeah. under? Yeah. His wife and children won't be travelling to Nazare, but they're nervous. Now many of you will be sitting there right now and wondering why, but for Matt the answer is very simple. As he gets older he has this overwhelming need to set benchmarks for other people with disabilities to inspire them to push boundaries and try and beat him. For Matt it's a calculated risk in the one place he feels completely free. It's my safe place, like you walk anywhere across the beach, in a car park. There's sticks and gutters and tow balls and all sorts of stuff trying to get you. In the ocean I fall off and I'm in water and it's, it's healing. Sophie Walsh, Nine News.